whatever that vehicle is under the cover on the bottom row seems to me like it would belong on the side with the Cybertruck and the semi. Well, I want to talk about what did we hear at the annual general meeting? What did um, the shareholder meeting, what did Elon say that's new about the vehicles, about the plans for the new vehicles? And one of the exciting things he showed was this um, screenshot of the new vehicles that are out there. And you can see here that there's three that was under wraps, okay? First of all, he did say that the Tesla Semi is now, um, he gave the you know approval for it to go in mass scale. So that's one thing we can talk about. We'll talk about the Cybertruck also. These two vehicles there, what are they and what is this one? What's your thoughts on that? Well, so there's obviously lots of speculation around this and lots of different possibilities. One of the, you know, my initial impressions were, okay, one of them is the $25,000 consumer uh, compact vehicle. And then the other one is the pure robo taxi, no steering wheel, no pedals. Um, and then the other larger vehicle down there is probably thing that came to mind was that's a van um but you know it's also potentially a three row suv so you know it could be either one of those um but then one of the things that jason calacanis said was he actually expects the vehicle on over by the semi to be the roadster which on the one hand, it kind of confused mm. me because we've already seen, yeah. you know, the yeah. Roadster. Why Why is it under a cover? Yeah. But then mm -hmm. on the other hand, the Roadster is not shown anywhere on this slide. And so maybe that is what that is. Um, no. Kind of interesting and confusing to think about. Uh, also, the arrangement to me is interesting. I would anticipate that the one on the right, the reason that it's on the right is because it is a commercial vehicle like the semi. But then if you, if that's true and both the vehicles on the left are consumer vehicles, you know, I, I would think that if it's a van, that the van would be more of a commercial focused vehicle um, and it would belong further over there on the right. So the fact that the, whatever that, vehicle is under the cover on the bottom row seems to me like it would belong on the side with the cyber truck and the semi so you just um you just made me rethink what i was about to say so i i did this on a another show i just did with yashu and i have a very different theory of what's going on than anyone else so far so my theory is that these two here are uh the low cost affordable models said models too and that they were going to use the same production line as the right the same you know the, the cars that we're building today so that's what i think these two are this one i think is actually the robo taxi design first i've been saying that i believe that the robo taxi does not need to be a two-seater despite that 90 plus percent of rides there's one person on uber and lyft and despite that you know five percent is two people I think that you're going to maximize the experience. You're going to walk in like a London cab, lots of space, lots of screens, really, really make that experience better. You don't need to have a low cost car for robo taxi. You can have an expensive car for robo taxi because the margins just, just wipe away the cost for you to make that car in the first place. Now that's what I was thinking. This is the robo taxi first design. These are the two, um, you know, lower for more affordable cars, but your comment that this thing here is why did they put it to the right that now throws all of everything i just said off <laughs> so interesting well, good points that you know that's why i'm wondering if there is any significance to its position and yeah because yeah. none of the it, scenarios that i could come up with in my head made well, sense if yeah, there is significance is, there one is that this is cyber cab right so it's built on the cyber cab um this is the cyber cab and therefore it's, this is the robo taxi first design and they did this based on uh production lines so this is the cyber cab you know much more akin to the cyber truck um production then you got the semi then you got the six production that are very similar just normal cars so but then i that doesn't make sense to me that a low affordable model will be van like 
or SUV well, like, square like. You see, that seems to me more like yeah, the cyber van, the cyber uh, designed, cyber inspired. The shape is, is very interesting, but you know it. It does seem like the you know the top row; those are going to be your sedans, and the bottom row is going to be your SUVs. Um, and so that you know, SUV van, mm. or you know yeah. what you said about their Elon saying we're going to make multiple yeah. new models, and they're going to be made on the existing lines. Potentially, the those are the two on the left are those two models, like you said, and then the one on the right goes back to commercial. Um, the robo taxi with no steering wheel and pedals, and and maybe that shape there has nothing. To, you know, maybe it is cyber, or maybe it is what you said, where it's a, a larger mm -hmm. form factor. I don't know if there is any significance to the, or I don't think there's a ton of significance to the shape of what is under the sheet. I'm gonna take back what I said because the Cybertruck is not commercial. So you were saying these two are commercial. They're not. This is not commercial. This one is. So that doesn't mean this one is commercial. I mean, they're definitely fleet ready vehicles. Yeah. Like obviously there's a huge retail for for the semi, it is commercial and it is a fleet vehicle. I think that the Cybertruck is capable of being a fleet vehicle that when they start selling the base model of the Cybertruck, I think that those are an extremely yeah. good option for fleets of work trucks. Um, I mean, that's why I say that, but maybe I am wrong. Maybe you're right. And for commenters, like, obviously we would love to hear what is it that we've got right on this? What is it that we've got wrong? <laughs> yeah. What are your theories? I mean, cause this is so far out in speculation land and yeah. we are struggling to make sense of it. So give us your yeah. thoughts and uh, help us to unravel this mystery. So let's talk Cybertruck. So one of the new information that Elon shared at the annual shareholder meeting was the Cybertruck is now at 1300 uh, run rate per week. And uh, so this, you know, mission made the impossible possible with the Cybertruck. He also said that. And uh, so he said now production reached a production record of 1300 Cybertrucks per week. So I think if you are 1300, you're talking 67,000 per year now. That is obviously not going to be, you know, what it is by the end of the year necessarily because they were slow at the first half of the year. But if you think that the second half of the year is actually going to be faster than 1300, the final months, it could be ended up around 67 at that point then. A targeting production increase of 2,500 Cybertruck units per year per week by the end of 2024. So that was the goal. You've also said that he might be sandbagging this, I believe. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean... Let's see, 1,300 plus 2,500 gets you up just under 4,000 Cybertrucks per week is essentially, I think they're saying it's 3,800 Cybertrucks per week by the end of 2024. Is that the 250,000 units per year is 4,800. So it seems like we're, yeah, that's what I was thinking. 5,000 units per week is roughly that 250,000 run rate. And so this is saying that by the end of this year, we're still going to be shy of that, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere more in the neighborhood, of probably 175. All right. And then he also said that Tesla is going to end production of the Cybertruck Foundation Series units and then shift its focus onto the non-Foundation Cybertrucks in the fourth quarter. That's in the fourth quarter. What's your thoughts on that one? I thought he was saying it was going to be sooner than that. In the call, uh, apparently the source for this reporting has a different view on that to me when he was talking at the shareholder meeting yesterday yesterday it sounded more like potentially next quarter that they're rolling into production that's not foundation series but it's good to see that they're they're working through all of that i don't know if that means that they're having great progress on the cost grind that elon mentioned yesterday or if it just means that they've run through the entire list i've heard um that some people that were pretty late putting in their order have already gotten offers now to configure their foundation series Cybertruck. So it could just be that they finally run through the entire order queue of people and everyone who had a pre-order in place had an opportunity to purchase a Cybertruck foundation edition, probably if they're in the U S or Canada. Um, 
And so now that they've made that offer to everyone, the next move is to begin selling the lower priced trims. And then I think they'll probably do that thing again. They'll probably have the the top trim of non-foundation series is the next one that will go on sale. And they'll probably go through the entire list uh, and offer them the ability to configure that trim. And then once that's done, then they come down to the lower trims. And you would hope that, you know, each time they lower the price, they're actually able to increase the conversion rate of people who are ordering that vehicle. Um, and if we're, you know, making it to 250 ish thousand vehicle, somewhere between, we'll just say 200 and 250,000 run rate per year by the end of this year, I mean, that's really good progress. And that means that they can put a lot of these on the road and um, that just really helps to improve the financials uh, because the the overhead that is being assigned to these vehicles right now is really high. And um, so it'll make a big dent in profitability if we can get more units out the door. Okay. Right now, let's get to him talking about Cybertruck can go international next year. Their compensation package in 2018 and again Thank uh, you. this year. And shout out to uh, Tesla Boomer Mama. Alexandra, uh, you, I had the privilege to talk to you in 2013 uh, briefly, and you so, spoke about the truck, which became the Cybertruck. Um, you're a man of reward. Um, I have friends all over the world in Asia, Canada, and Europe, and I, I know the Cybertruck's been on tour. How's been the, the reception for the Cybertruck, and when will it be, or is it possible to sell, and when will it be sold internationally? Um, yeah, so. Um, <clears throat> I think probably you know we, we might be able to uh, certify it for other markets sometime next year, um, but uh, like for, for sure this year it's just North America. Um, we did design the car to North American requirements uh, because uh, if you start going with the super set of all international requirements, it forces a lot of constraints on the on on Cybertruck that would make the product frankly worse. Um, so. I think we'll, we'll, need, we'll need to make a special version that is, for example, uh, China compliant or Europe compliant. Um, and, um, but, it, but it really doesn't make sense to add that complexity until we've uh, achieved a higher volume production on the Cybertruck. There's still a lot of work to do on uh, cost down for the Cybertruck. Um, you know, I generally would say like the, the, the level of difficulty of uh, going from, say, prototype you go from prototype to production. It's a hundred times harder to go from, from the, you know, from prototype to production is a hundred times harder. And then once you reach production, to improve the price by twenty percent, like or the, or the cost of goods by twenty percent, is harder than reaching production in the first place. Like it's mega pain. <laughs> it's like, you know, and to be frank, it's not the funnest job in the world, you know. Like chiseling pennies is not, uh, it's like washing the dishes, frankly. You know, like wash a lot of dishes here. Um, like it's super fun to make prototypes. That's really fun and it's, it's kind of cool to get, it's, it's pretty cool to get the production going. Then the cost grind is a grind. That is like, you know, hard, it's hard work. Um, you know, there's some reward to it. Like there's sort of a reward to washing the dishes, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you have clean dishes. Um, but it's that is a, that is a, this is a tough. <laughs> so that's real hard work. Uh, I just have to say that it, there's been a, a really big reception. Like I have friends that you know message me and said they love the tr Cybertruck design, and it's it's definitely a head turner. So oh yeah, I I think from a demand standpoint, we, we would have plenty of demand in other parts of the world for Cybertruck. No question. Like wherever it goes, anywhere in the world, it's a it gets a massive crowd. So. So it's not a demand thing. It's uh, it's really we've got to reach volume production, go through the cost grind. Uh, I can't. I, it'd be difficult for me to overstate the difficulty in the cost grind. It's really intense. Um, and then we've got to recertify the car, which includes making some design changes for uh, to meet to be compliant in other markets. Yeah, right. that's our good friend Sat. He's been on the show mm -hmm. many times. Uh, brilliant, great guy, and. Uh, Asking about Cybertruck going international, what do you think about Elon's answer? 
Yeah. So I think that, you know, there's, we've already got two variations of the cyber truck that are being produced. You've got the dual motor and you've got the cyber beast. And so I think that that's, you know, we'll just have to see, like I said, when we move to the next wave, can people configure both cyber beast versions and dual motor versions now that we're out of foundation, or are they going to limit just to cyber beast for the next set of orders? Kind of hard to, to say on that side. I, I do wonder if we get the next single motor variation of the cyber truck before we go to international that it may be easier to add the complexity of those international versions and stick with the the dual motor and the cyber beast than to say, hey, we want to go ahead and make the the single motor and that's going to be available here in North America at the types of volumes that they're really going to be looking at there. <clears throat> but it is good news, obviously, for international customers to hear that they're are, you know, there it's feasible and there's at least a plan at this point in time for the Cybertruck to be sold internationally. 